fifth team race with the result of the competition already really beyond doubt. 183 points to 81. The British Commonwealth team struggling. This man, Ron Haslam, one of the few British Commonwealth riders to match the Americans. Ron started from the back row of the grid in the last team race, but he fought through to finish fifth. And that puts him on the front row of the grid for this race with Freddie Spencer, the winner of the fourth team race in pole position, furthest away from Ron. Next to him is Randy Mamola. Then comes Eddie Lawson and Kenny Roberts on the team of Marlborough Yamahas with Ronnie, the only member of the host team on the front row of the grade behind them. Wayne Gardner, Rob McCallie, Roger Marshall, Mike Baldwin. And away they go. And once again, Haslam with a rocket. A flying start from Haslam. From the front row of the grid, out into the lead. Mamola is second, Kenny Roberts is third, Eddie Lawson was fourth, but Rob McKelney has gone through, and that's a fine ride by Rob McKelney. It's Rob McKelney for Britain, who's in fourth place. Ron Haslam is out in front. So, Ron Haslam, the leader, Randy Mamola, I think. And Rob McKelney then, fourth place, that's Kenny Roberts, number two. Still Haslam out in front. Haslam, point number five, the factory Honda. And Ron apparently none the worse for that tumble yesterday, which spoiled an excellent day's racing. There's Randy Mumble in number three, Kenny Roberts number two. Mike Paulson in the middle of that bunch, and uh, Rob McKelvey fourth under pressure from Eddie Lawson. And Mamola trying to the inside line and chicane, can't do it. Lawson lays the bike onto the side, over hard to the right, hard to the left. Accelerate hard into the straight. The end of the first lap, Haslam from Mamola. Kenny Roberts is third, Kenny Lawson is fourth. Rob McKelvey going to Perla in fifth place. And Haslam fighting hard. Freddie Spencer down in 12th place at the moment. So we've got to keep our eye on the, the progress of the world champion. And Haslam almost losing the lead there to Mamola. Mamola dies to the inside, absolutely rocking through. That was the place that Mamola beat Haslam, Haslam in uh, the first team race. And that's the spot he chose to go ahead again. So Randy Mamola, the winner of two team races, and Haslam now forced to settle for second place. Kenny Roberts gets a quick have to pick the bike up, puts it back in. Roger Martin the same spot when it is all there. Well, Steve Hewitt sitting alongside me. What do you think the problem was there, Keith? I think Kenny was riding on the block really hard to try and make up the, the time he needs to get up with these two guys in the front. Uh, Randy Mamola's riding superbly on this NS, considering it's his first ride out on it this uh, year. Field fairly closely bunched together. Mamola leads Hanson, Lawson, then Robert, then Rob McKelvey. Well, the uh, Heron Suzuki squad sponsored uh, from now on by Men Only magazine, and uh, that will add a little bit of interest to uh, male road racing and see that in the coming months. And certainly the new sponsorship seems to put a, a new lease of life into Rob's team. Yes, there's no doubt about that. Rob is riding the 1982 X Mamola machine. Um, and incidentally, Barry Sheen is riding the 83 Mamola machine and doesn't seem to be getting on with it quite as well as uh, Rob is going on with the, the earlier bike. So that's uh, an interesting point there. The battle here for the lead, closing up a little bit as so Lawson puts the pressure on Haslam and Haslam in turn gets closer to Manola. Manola the leader, Haslam second on bike number five, Lawson is number four, Roberts is number two, Rob McKelvey number 19, Mike Baldwin 43, Roger Marshall number 11. Oh, oh Barry Sheen almost off. Barry Sheen almost on his ear. Well, that was a nerve-wracking moment there for Barry Sheen. Mamola leads. Ron Haslam is second. Eddie Lawson is third. Kenny Roberts is fourth. And Haslam looks as though he's going to have a go to pass Mamola here. Goes wide, but will come through on the inside. Will power the bike through. Look for the chance to go through on the inside. Can't quite do it. And Lawson also looks for the chance to pass. 
Elias Haslam Haslam winds on the Honda. Eddie Lawson, Chris, is absolutely immaculate. I don't think there's enough to be said about this guy. I've seen him in the Grand Prix over the last two years, and look at that. I mean, he's so smooth. You never see Lawson put a wheel out of touch. Well, Lawson gets closer to Haslam, and Roberts gets closer to that leading trio, so we're in for a four-way dive. But all credit to Ron Haslam, who is riding rich, he's riding magnificently, and he really is one of the few British and Commonwealth teams who can match the Americans. He's the only man in our team this year that's um, got a chance of doing anything. That pack on just there, that's where everybody was having a big slide. That's where Mr. Sheen just had his big slide as well. Mola, Haslam, Lawson, Roberts, Lewis Kane, Bennett, Baldwin, Rob McKelvey, that's Mike Baldwin, the American champion. End of the fourth lap, they're on their first lap now, and Haslam still there in the thick of things. How nice it would be if Ron could win one of these. Considering the effort this man's put in over this weekend, I mean, he's the only man in our team that's been capable or even looked like doing anything as far as winning. He's tried so hard at resulted in a tumble yesterday. I would like to see Ron once win at least one of these. One second separating this quartet. Haslam there in second place on bike number five. The local boy, he lives at Langley Mills just up the road from Donington Park, and he's under pressure from Lawson. Lawson has to ease up. He's sort of out diving from the inside. Looks Haslam hangs on to second place. This man too will be well pleased. Randy Mamola, he's had a magnificent... And here's Spencer powering his way through. Spencer about to back to Mike Colwyn. Then Steve Parrish, number six, who's been drafted into the squad to replace King Dion. He's having this problem with the great we'll talk about that in just a minute or two. The leaders going through, completing their fifth lap. Mamola, Haslam, Lawson, Roberts, Spencer, Baldwin, McKelvey and Marshall. Well, Keith, you've had a problem uh, so far today, haven't you? Yes, I have. The last two days we've had absolutely tremendous problems with our, our machine braking wise um, and I decided to pull the bike out of the competition because it, it, I felt it fair to let Steve Parrish have a go as reserve and it's nice to see him doing reasonably well he's been chucked in the deep end a bit here but uh, fair do to Steve he's risen to the occasion as he always does Randy Mamola leads Haslam is second he's got a pillion passenger in the shape of Eddie Lawson and Kenny Roberts is fourth and Freddie Spencer is just over three seconds behind Mamola and on this sort of form that Spencer has been showing that's hardly any time in any distance at all Mamola, Haslam, Lawson, Robert there's Spencer drifting Baldwin, Rob McKelvey, Roger Marshall there good to see Roger Marshall having a better ride Yes, Roger Marshall has been struggling over the past few weeks in England in the uh, English meetings, and it's nice to see him back on form again. I mean, this track he's done well on before, so uh, perhaps we'll talk about the back of the late stage. Six laps completed, nine more laps to go. Mamola, Haslam, Lawson, Roberts, and closer, closer comes this man, Freddie Spencer. Freddie Spencer, Chris, is an absolute phenomenon. He's unbelievable. Two and a half seconds now, the gap between Mamola in the lead and Freddie Spencer in fifth place. And he can see them, of course, there, that little group right in his sight. Relatively speaking, easier to haul people in when you can see them. But at the pace those front four are going, I wouldn't like to say it's easy. <laughs> it's probably not easy. If, it, if it's easy for anybody, it's going to be Spencer. If you watch the way this man drifts the, the bike onto the main straight, it's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the position he's in, he's now got the big toe, he's, he's within 30 yards of the next man and he's going to be able to drag his way through. I said 30 yards, I meant three. Spencer is with them, you can see that he's right on the tire tracks of Roberts and he's going to go through on the inside, he's quicker down the straight than the Yamaha. We've seen that already, Roberts and Spencer side by side, Spencer has the better line and he moves into fourth place and we see that Aslam is just ahead of him so it means that Lawson has gone through to second place it's Mamola, Lawson, Aslam, Spencer, Roberts and Aslam under pressure from his Grand Prix teammate Spencer one and a half seconds now behind Mamola out in front and Spencer looking all so close to running at the back of Aslam there Francis Becky. Misses as good as a 
are when it comes to here, Spencer. <laughs> Look at these three. They're riding so close, they're almost picking. It has the Spencer a run three of the very best riders in the world. And Spencer making almost the same sort of overtaking maneuver. You can see that Ron's just a little bit slow through that one. Well, he may have the bike here slightly different to these other guys, but what you've got to remember is Spencer is on the fourth in the Honda, which has got that much more low down power. It's a very, very fast motorcycle. So, Haskell and Robert close against Spencer. Robert, I don't think, has given a hope of doing a little bit better. I'm sure Kenny would like to go away from this meeting with a win. That's the battle between Haslam and Spencer again. is going to outgun. Or is he? That's the battle for the lead, Manola and Lawson, and Spencer has gone ahead. Yes, Spencer's through to third. Ron Haslam is now fourth. Kenny Roberts is fifth. It's interesting to note that out of these four Americans, Lawson, Spencer, Mamola and Roberts, Lawson is a poor relation to the media more than anything, and he has more to prove publicly than most of these other guys. Another nasty twitch there from Spencer, and he just absolutely ignores it. He's riding as if there's no problem at all, no lack of adhesion on the track. If this was a Grand Prix test, I think we'd see Spencer really flying. I think he's, he's coming through the field from the back. It's all fairly easy for him, and he's not having to try exceptionally hard. At a Grand Prix, he'd be trying even harder, and I think we'd see the lap record down in the 12. Well, this is the 500cc world champion. He's under pressure in the world championship at the moment, having failed to score in the South African uh, Grand Prix. Spencer's flying, bobbing and weaving. Haslam hanging on to fourth place from Robert. And Lawson is right with Mamola. Lawson is really breathing down the neck of the fellow, of the fellow Californian. As I said, I think he's got something to prove. And he would, nothing would please Eddie more than, than beating Mamola because obviously Mamola has been in the limelight for the last couple of years. in England for, for a long, long time, especially from the American side. I mean, they have got the best four riders in the world. It's no real wonder why they're beating the British guys. We just haven't got the, the in-depth quality that the Americans seem to have at the moment. And Roberts has gone ahead and has them, so Ron is back down into fifth place. And Spencer has outbraked Lawson on the inside line, lays the bike over onto the knee, both sides. It's Mamola, Spencer... Mamola looks over his shoulder and sees that number one plate right behind him. It must be a daunting sight when you see Spencer breathing right down your neck like that. It's inevitable that he's going to pass him at some point. It's just one we wonder whether Mamola has the, the, the time to come back at him. It's ten laps have gone, there's five more to go, and really you'd be a, a very brave man not to bet on Spencer winning this one. Mamola. Spencer goes through, Mamola went wide onto the curb, and Spencer just gunned it. I think Mamola missed a gear there, he's lost two places. Spencer, the leader now, Lawson in second place, and Mamola having done all the hard work. Mamola, having led for ten laps, finds himself relegated to first spot, and suddenly it's the 500cc World Championship battle between Spencer, the championship the reigning champion and Lawson the championship leader. Spencer number one, Lawson number four. Eleven laps gone. Lawson in second place behind Spencer. Mamola is third. Roberts is fourth. Haslam is fifth at the moment. Rob McKelney is in sixth place, Roger Marshall is seventh, and Mike Baldwin eighth. 
Then comes Wayne Gardner, ninth place, Steve Parrish, 10th, Barry Sheen, 11th, Greg Cross in 12th, and Dave Aldana, 13th at the moment. That's the race leaders, Spencer, Lawson, and Manola.
up the air. That, Boy, is he pleased. That's uncharacteristic of Randy. He doesn't usually get emotional over winning races, but it's nice to see him to please. Well, of course, he's beaten the man who leads the World Championship at the moment, and Randy Mamolu will join the Grand Prix hunt, and he joins, he stops to see how Spencer is, and they tell him that Spencer's OK, and uh, just to repeat the result then, the winner of this fifth team race, Number three, Randy Mamola. Second, Eddie Lawson. Third, Kenny Roberts. Fourth is Roger Mar uh, Ron Haslam. Fifth is Wayne Gardner. Sixth, Rob McKelney. Seventh, Mike Baldwin. Eighth, Steve Parrish. Ninth is Barry Sheen. And there is Randy Mamola, a really happy little chap. Captain Barry, your worst fears really have been substantiated, haven't they? Why, well, yeah, I mean... They, they're going to win without any shadow of a doubt, and they deserve to win. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're, they're better than any of our guys, really. It's just the fact we just simply don't have the machinery. I mean, the, the Americans have the best, best a bunch of guys from America possible to have. They're all brilliant riders, but they do have very good machinery. How do they manage to produce such good riders? And a quartet of four, absolutely superb. Well, without any doubt, but... Um, I think it's the fact that it's the right guys on the right machinery. There again, if you stuck, um, say, Wayne Gardner, Rob McKelney... Barry Sheen? Yeah. Hopefully, they all reckon I'm too old now, anyway. <laughs> but, um, you know, our guys could do just as good on the right machinery, but we just simply don't have it. That's all there is to it. And you've been riding your heart out. Well, yeah, you struggle. You know, what I said to the guys before the racing started, as the captain, you know, and you're supposed to give them a little chat, not that I can tell them anything. I just said, look, listen, whatever you do, don't race amongst yourselves, you know, because all you're going to do is race amongst yourself, fall off or whatever it is. So that's why at the back end of the field, there's been three or four English guys and they haven't been doing anything because it's senseless racing against one another because we, we can't, if there's an American there, by all means, get him. But um, it's senseless racing amongst yourselves. It's got to be better than luck next year. I don't know. We do, You know, if... Um, if the British team or the Commonwealth team don't get the machinery, it's going to be the same story. Barry, thanks for talking to us. No, OK. One more race to come. The Americans in charge, but the drama continues, and that's the position.